Howdy y'all. It's really cold this morning. We're in the San Juan National Forest on the east fork of the San Juan River. And the reason we are here is because I wanted to do some fishing. We got here around one o'clock yesterday and it wasn't this cold. It was probably 70 degrees. Right now it's about probably 40. It hurts. And it's also 7 a.m. And with that combination of 7 a.m. and 40 degrees, Kelly's still asleep. And if you're wondering what I'm doing, I've got some cordage. And I don't have any stringer for fish I catch. Because I am determined to catch fish that I'm keeping this morning. Might not cook it today, but probably freeze it up for a later meal. There. Got a little loop there. And I left the roof lighter in the camper. So I'll just put a knot in this for now to keep the cordage from fraying at the end. I don't want to bother Kelly. There. Got ourselves some line. <sighs> I know this is going to be so cold. Actually, it's not that bad. It's colder outside than it is in the water. It'll heat up pretty quick though, once that sun comes over. Now the reason I'm fishing so early is when we got here yesterday afternoon, it was in the 70s up here, but with the direct sun, it was so hot on these rocks and there was no fish jumping, there was no action at all. Then I came out and checked and scouted last night and see if I was even gonna go fishing today. And I came to this hole right here and as the temperature was dropping, fish were jumping right here. Maybe we'll catch something. Look at that nice, beautiful rainbow trout. Second cast of the morning. We'll cook something up nice with this one. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say I spooked all the fish out of that hole. That's the only fish I've caught so far this morning. Actually, it's the only bite I've had, but I hear Kelly moving around in the truck camper. Good morning. Morning. I've caught one keeper. How big? That's a lie. I From know, my I'm nose like, to. Whoa, that's really big. <laughs> <laughs> From my nose to my hand, probably about that big. Oh, okay. I'm so cold, I can't feel my feet. I know. It's so I'm super happy Cody caught a fish. Hopefully you can catch another one. But for right now, I'm making breakfast and this is oatmeal, pistachios, cinnamon, I must put some vanilla. Uh, this is some leftover coconut milk that I'm gonna pour in there. So we've got chopped up pistachios, dark chocolate. And I already put the coconut milk in there while it was cooking, but I'm gonna put extra drizzled on top. Then we got coconut flakes, and that's it. If you're wondering what that loud noise is, we got the heater on. That's how cold it is this morning. I'm ready for that sun to hit our camper. It's a love-hate relationship for me right now because I know once that sun comes up, the fish are going to go in deeper holes. Mm, yeah. Kelly outdid it with a little breakfast this morning. That thing is becoming our new favorite, like, go-to breakfast dish, isn't it? Yeah, it's like the best oatmeal I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I told her I was going to try a little bit more fishing. I know that the sun's coming out and getting warmer. If I can catch at least one more trout, that'd be pretty good for Kelly and I. But on the east fork of the San Juan River, all you're allowed to catch in one day is four trout. You're allowed to have eight on your possession if you caught four the day before. Now, not all rivers in Colorado are this way. Some have more strict regulations than this. Wait. No way! My trout got off. I should have used a lighter for this. That fray all came apart. That gummit. And a fish just jumps in front of me. You've got to be kidding me. He yanked that thing apart so hard. I'll go ahead. I'm going to try to cast a few more times, see if I can catch my limit. If not, I might find something else to do today because it's getting warm already. I 
think I'm gonna walk down the road just a hair and try out a different hole because I've been just fishing this one all morning. Now that's beautiful. Let's try a cast. Beautiful spot, but they're still not biting. I'm gonna go ahead and check on Kelly, see what she's been up to. Oh. Now that Cody's back, I think either we're gonna go try to find a different camp spot, cause this is a nice spot, but it's not really ideal. Or we're going to maybe go and meander around in town. But this morning we put our solar panels out to charge. We have two power banks. Our big power bank is the Jackery Explorer 1000, and we love it, don't get us wrong, we've had it for probably four or five years, and we have no issues whatsoever out of the power bank. But these solar panels are not working. We're only getting about 30 watts of power in, and these are two 100 watt solar panels. And we're only charged at 59%, and when we plugged it in, it was at 54%. So, looks like we're gonna have to buy some new solar panels. These are what they look like if you're not familiar with Jackery. Panels look like that. Not, the, not this little one over here, but the too big. Luckily, we can charge it when we are driving, but that doesn't help if we just wanna stay in one spot for the day. Now, while we are driving, like we said, we can charge both of the solar power banks. So the little bitty one gets charged up here through a USB in the console, and the big boy is in the back. We can just plug it in there and it charges both of them really, really well. All right, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know if we're gonna go find another camp or if we're gonna go to town, so we'll let you know here in a minute. We decided to come on downtown, even though there were a ton of camp spots open, we're hoping they'll still be open when we get back. Either way it goes, we'll find somewhere to sleep. We are gonna go check out and see what's going on. And so we're, I don't know if we told you, we're in Pagosa Springs, Colorado. And as soon as we drove in here, it just felt so chill like the vibe felt so nice here and there's a lot of restaurants a lot of things to do there's a brewery so we're just going to take a little stroll downtown see what's going on see what kind of shops are available so downtown was pretty short it was pretty much all these little shops here just your traditional Pagosa Springs shops, but there are hot springs here. So we thought we'd come take a little look-see. That is uh, the Springs Resort. This is real cool. When the water is up higher, there's rafting along this section of the river. But since it's low, I don't even know if they're doing inner tubes right now, but there's a hot spring right there, right off the park. Right under the pavilion, they have a hot spring. Yeah. It's hot. It's really hot. Oh gosh, that I mean, is it's coming really out of the hot. <laughs> that is really hot, but super cool. We're gonna leave downtown, see what else we can get into. Like we said, there's a brewery here. So we might go check that out. <coughs> Told her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoo, I got in the back of my throat. I'm always waiting on Cody because he's always drinking water. Hey, this is an outdoor store right here. Ah. Okay, you want to go in there? Yeah, right let's now? Go in there. Like okay, that. so we are at the brewery. It's called Riff Raff Brewery. There's two locations in town. The other one that was downtown we could have walked to was closed, but this one is open and now Cody wants to go into the gear store. Ski and bow rack. I just Ooh. like outdoor gear stores. I do too. They're fun to go look at. It never fails. If I go into a shop that sells flies, I'm buying flies. And on another note, we just found out that there's a wildfire going off exactly where we were camping at or just down the road. Yeah, we saw a bunch of fire trucks going that direction, but they weren't like driving crazy. 
and then like other work trucks so i don't really know but yeah we just confirmed it with them that it is an active wildfire and that cloud right there that is the wildfire That is pretty, pretty good. We're in luck. We found a spot and we're the only people at the spot. It's a pretty big open area, but we didn't see too many campers as we were pulling in. It also goes that direction. We're kind of right smack dab in the middle and look at this water access. That's what I'm talking about. So guess what? We're gonna go down on the water. I haven't even put my feet in this water. Oh, it's kind of chilly. Not too bad. One of the bigger reasons we came back though is so that Cody can catch his limit. I'll do it after dinner. Yep. So where we were camping this morning is just up that way. We did find other couple of spots, but it was kind of treacherous to get down to the water. Cody might walk that way later to go fishing. Are you talking about that big hole? Yeah. Yeah, that hole that I was fishing at, the very last hole with the big boulder, it's just Oh, it's just a stone's throw away. I'm gonna head back down there after we eat dinner, try to catch some fish this evening because I saw the fish under the boulder. I know they're gonna be at that rapid right when the sun starts setting. Probably need to also burn the end of that line. I'll do that later. I'll tell you what, this is uptown high rent, isn't it, honey? Yeah, this is a nice spot. I'm glad we moved camp. That other spot was hot. <laughs> It's weird because it doesn't look like there's more shade here, but there is. You can have the beach with shade or sun if you want. And then up by the truck camper, there's a little tree right there. And that produces shade if we want to come back here and possibly work out in this area. There's a lot more options for this little camp spot here for us, but I'm just gonna have my beer and chill. Let's take a shower. Some of you new here, we're gonna talk about how we shower. So pretty simple, this is our shower, it's a wet bath. If you have been following us for a while, you know we do not have a regular toilet. This is just your traditional camp toilet with a bag. There's nothing crazy in there, just tissue paper. We haven't used it yet, but we use it as a trash bag for tissue paper and paper towel. So it comes in handy. So what I'm going to do is remove the toilet. This is just a floor mat to cover the drain. Going to remove that. This is the towel that we're going to stand on. I usually shove this stuff out of the way in the meantime, because all this pretty much stays dry. We're going to pull the shower curtain back. We have our towels that we hang up there to dry that I place on the table. Now, while I'm showering, Cody is going to be prepping for dinner. I'm gonna make shrimp and grits here in a minute. So he's going to peel and devein the shrimp for me. So it gets a little tight in here. Actually, there's a lot of room. Don't act like there's Yeah, not. but I've never seen you try to open that drawer while I'm trying to open this guy. Oh no, look, look. Look at that. Whoa, right there. Bam. Hey. <laughs> That's handier than pockets on a shirt, I tell you what. Okay, back to the shower. So this is our floor towel, and I'm gonna lay this on the floor just like that so when you get out of the shower you have something to step on when you're dripping wet and you can dry off with your towel which is handy right here on the table we have all our soaps here we've got we like dr bronner's so another thing in this bathroom if you're interested where do we store everything we've got dirty clothes 
Q-tips, ponytail holders, my one and only clip, Cody's razor, feminine things. These are our workout clothes, they're dirty. We usually wear our workout clothes about three times before we throw them in their dirty clothes. I know, I know, but you know, we ain't got a lot of clothes to go through. Toothbrush, toilet paper. These are toothbrushes. Toilet paper, baby wipes, gotta have those. Okay, now let's shower. We're fully ready, we're gonna step in. We're gonna close the door so we don't get any water anywhere. Shower curtain A, shower curtain B. I pull this off because I don't want to get blasted with water. Turn the hot water on. This is for the shower head. And voila, we have water. Just gonna wait for it to heat up and then we can shower. While the missus takes her shower, I went ahead and got the shrimp for the shrimp and grits with water de-thawing the shrimp. And then I will de-vein and de-poop these guys. This is actually my task. Angel Princess does not like pulling in all that jazz. Since the day we were married, this has been my task. If you hear that sound, that's the tankless hot water heater cooling itself off when Kelly turns the water off. Kelly is still in the shower drying off. How are you, honey? I'm good. So my tasks on the shrimp are done. I've put them in the refrigerator. They're located right there. But I wanna take the opportunity to try to catch a few more trout before the sun sets. And Kelly is gonna cook while I'm doing that, just to divide and conquer before we run out of light. See that? Not going anywhere. Not this time. Bye, Angel Princess. Bye. I promised her I was gonna catch her some trout. She's gonna cook something amazing with it. I know it can be done. You know I can do it. You saw me do it this morning. I'm gonna go ahead and get dinner started. So tonight I'm making shrimp and grits and I'm gonna try to set this up in a way that I can film myself because usually Cody films me. So I'm gonna figure that out real quick. But the shrimp and grits is actually in my cookbook. Voila. So if you haven't picked one up yet, uh, Gourmet in the Forest. This shrimp and grits is a combination of my favorite way to prepare grits. Then we're gonna top it with shrimp and a cream sauce. It is so good. Coming back to that spot that we saw earlier with the large boulder. The only reason we didn't camp here is it is a really steep decline. And y'all know I wanted to let Angel Princess be able to have a really easy gradual grade to her river access with her lounger. This would not have been fun. But for me, this might be real fun. All right, we're gonna some bacon going. Bacon smells really good. While we're waiting on the bacon, we've got our shrimp here peeled and some Blanchard's Cajun seasoning. And we're just gonna hit the shrimp with that. Just gonna sprinkle it all over. And pretty much just season it to your liking. We like a heavy seasoning, so we like to go extra hard with that. We're gonna add our half and half and our broth to our big pot here. We got a can of corn, we're gonna open that up. While we're waiting on the bacon, I'm gonna cut up a couple of things. Got some green onions. So the green onions are going to be for the shrimp. We're just gonna slice it up really thin. I think the bacon is all done. With some bacon grease still in the pan, we're gonna add our corn, and we're gonna get that all browned up. Meanwhile, I've got this on boil. I think the shallot might be good. And let's go with chopping up the shallot. In the meantime, we're gonna take our bacon that we just fried and we're gonna crumble that up. I like to use the paper towel to just crumble it all up and then any pieces that I miss, I'll just break up with my fingers. Right there, y'all. Number two for the day. We're not losing this one. We are not losing this one. So our half and half and broth are boiling. So we've got a half a cup of cornmeal instead of a cup, because we're doing half. We're gonna go ahead and add in our corn to the broth and the half and half. And we're gonna whisk in our cornmeal. Turn the heat down a little bit. 
and we're just gonna kind of keep an eye on it and keep whisking it so it doesn't stick to the pan. Now we're gonna worry about our shrimp. Number two. I'm not even gonna pull this one out of the net. I'm just gonna hold it in the net. I don't wanna risk it. Since I just caught this one, I'm gonna try for number three. Cause you know, Kelly and I like to eat. Got some butter in our skillet back here for the shrimp. Still checking on the grit. In goes both of our onions, the green onion and the shallot. So I'll play that until it's soft. Our shallots are soft and I love it when I cook, cook with bacon in my cast iron because now there's just that bacon flavor all over the onion. We're gonna toss in our shrimp. Number three, one more to go. The grits are looking like they are almost done. So I'm gonna shred some cheese to go in the grits. I love it when I can find the boar's head three pepper. Colby Jack, oh, it's so good. So we are gonna shred that. We're gonna go ahead and add some butter into the grits since they are just about done. And we're just gonna let that butter melt. And then we're gonna add in the cheese. what I'm talking about. I can't believe this. I caught my limit. This is the greatest day of my life. Now that I've caught my limit and I have dinner for a future night, let's go see how dinner is going for tonight. I just turned my shrimp over. So this is what the shrimp are looking like. We've got the grits here. I've got to add the cheese to the grits. Now my burner's off on the grits as well. I'm just gonna let the cheese melt in there and the grits are pretty much done. Another thing what's good about this dish, if you notice, I'm not gonna use any salt and pepper just because the flavors of the cheese, the butter, the toasted corn, the bacon, that's kind of what makes all the flavors of this dish. So grits are pretty much done. They're just gonna stay warm over here. All right, shrimp look like they are done. We're gonna go in with some heavy cream. This is what's gonna make the sauce and bacon. We're just gonna let that cook all together for a minute. Angel Princess, I caught my limit. Looky here. Y'all, this is the best shrimp and grits Kelly has ever made. Well, I'm super excited that Cody caught four fish and we can have trout in the future. But we'll catch you on the other. See you on the next one.